Tara. Thank you. Uh, the president also suggested that extending the perimeter outside of HKIA <coughs> might put U.S. troops at too great of a risk, although it was not clear if he was meaning that the risk would be with the Taliban or with groups like al-Qaeda or mm -hmm. ISIS. Um, can you talk about that risk, and uh, is it because there was some sort of agreement with the Taliban that U.S. troops will not be on the streets of Kabul? I don't think there was any agreement that we, we wouldn't uh, be any, you know, anywhere in particular. Um, uh, but risk is a, ma a, a big part of managing any mission, Tara. And you're absolutely right. Um, there are other threats uh, in Afghanistan and in Kabul uh, than those that might be posed by the Taliban. And we have to be mindful of that. We talked yesterday about overwatch flights that were flying over Kabul. Uh, th that's to make sure that we're ready if we need to defend ourselves. Um, any, I'm not going to get into potential future operations one way or the other. I'm not going to speculate about whether or when or under what conditions we might expand um, the security perimeter that we're working with. There. But the president is absolutely right. An expansion uh, does incur extra risk. And you have to balance risk versus gain in every particular military operation you're conducting. And that will be no different for this one. We'll follow up on al -Yadid. Um We're also seeing reports that there might be food, water, sanitation shortages for the uh, for the evacuees that are there at Qatar. Sure. And so I was just wondering, General Taylor, are you, are you making plans to flow in more supplies? Uh, absolutely. So as um, understand that uh, that requirement to increase that throughput is there. So uh, to ensure that we have food, water, health care, and all those things, absolutely. Those are part of those other flights. Uh, the supplies are being in there to make sure uh, that we can take care of that. To how you need. Yes, right. Okay. John, a, a follow-up on, you know, expanding the mission and the risk to Americans. Apparently, the Germans are sending helicopters out throughout Kabul to pick up their citizens and bring them to the airport. The reports of the French doing something similar, getting their people out, commandos going in. So, you know, why can't the Americans do that? Is it because it's too risky for that kind of operation? Uh, the president, I think, was clear that we'll do whatever we have to do uh, to rescue as many Amer as, as rescue as many Americans as want to leave Afghanistan. And the secretary is not going to rule anything in or out in terms of what the possibilities might be there. Um, I would also note, though, Tom, um, that though there have been sporadic reports of some Americans uh, not being able to get through checkpoints. I fully admit that. By and large, what we've been seeing is that Americans are able to get through those checkpoints and are able to get uh, onto, uh, onto the airfield. Um, so uh, we aren't seeing, we're not aware of uh, indications that there is that big a need for that. But obviously, now we've built out extra capacity over the course of just the last couple of days. Uh, if there's a need to do something additional to what we're doing now to get Americans processed and on planes, the secretary is going to want to keep as many options open to him as available. It sounds like what the president was saying today is he doesn't want to risk American lives to save Afghans who helped Americans for the past 20 years. That uh, seems like the message. Uh, I'm sorry. The, the president doesn't want to risk American lives to go and save Afghan, Afghans who helped Americans during the past 20 years. That, that, was, seen, that was a message today, I heard. I, I didn't hear it that, that same way, Tom. I mean, in fact, I think the, the president was very clear in his remarks that we know we have an obligation to the Afghans that have helped us over the last 20 years. And Tom, the numbers belie that impression. I mean, if you just look at the numbers of the, the, the general brief, you know, 13,000 since August 14th, 18,000 total, the vast, vast majority of that number are Afghans. So, I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. Well, the numbers are all over the map, frankly. I mean, some are saying 35,000, others are saying 100,000, 200,000. In terms of what's left to get. Right. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't give you a, a, be perfectly predictive about what that's going to look like, the, the total pool, because you also have to f flow in families. And we are moving and have been moving a lot of family members. But, but I mean, just to give you an example, uh, the, the general uh, noted uh, nearly 6,000 uh, came out in the last 24 hours. 5,000 of them were Afghans. 5,000 were Afghans. So I just don't accept the premise that this administration and this government and our military is not prioritizing uh, moving Afghan partners and people who have helped us out of the country. Just the numbers don't say that.